Welcome to the AFR Saints channel, where we provide you daily content on your favorite team, the New Orleans Saints. Do us a favor and hit that subscribe button. Be sure to leave your comments below and smash that like button. Who that? What was last week like? I mean, put this into, into perspective for us. Tatum, like, here comes Josh Dobbs on Tuesday, and then, yeah. oh, you're going to go play and win the game on Sunday in Atlanta. Honestly, Matt, I don't, I do not know how to describe Sunday. And I have asked so many players and coaches to do the same, and they just are like, I don't know. I mean, I, I literally talked to our center, Garrett Bradbury, today. He worked with Kirk then Jaron Hall, then Josh Dobbs in a matter of eight days in two games. And mm. somehow he was able to know their cadences, to know the differences between the two. I mean, there are basically two new quarterbacks for him. He had worked with Kirk Cousins for five seasons. To be able to pull off what they did on Sunday says so much about this team. I also, Garrett Bradbury is our center. I also, he also told me, you know, during warmups, I should have said, I looked at one of our guys and I was like, maybe we should practice, do a snap with Josh just in case something happens. He had never <laughs> taken a snap from him before. And he goes, no, there's not really time for that. So they just kind of were learning on the fly is what he called it. So for this offensive line to only have one false start in that game for four yards, only one penalty in the game for the team as a whole is just insane. Thinking about the way that this season started for the Vikings it's almost like a, I just I don't know how to describe it. It was crazy the way everything was pulled off. Josh didn't know a play, didn't take a snap at practice. He was only on the scout team. Wow. So that's how they knew his cadence was different. I mean, it, it is really remarkable what they did. That's that's a good reason why, despite throwing for under 200 yards, he was NFC Offensive Player of the Week. I mean, it's, it's kind of, I, I don't know if it's totally unprecedented, but it, it's got to be close to uh, completely unprecedented to see that unfold. It, uh, yeah, go it ahead. probably honestly is. I mean, he's he said that he it was like if you're taking sp AP Spanish and then you know in five days you have to take the AP French exam, and you have to be able to. So, so he knows the plays, he knows what he's doing, but it's completely different words and phrases and. You know, coach was in there mapping out plays for him. They were in his ear in that two-minute drill at the end of the game going, okay, this is your out route. This is your X receiver. This is this. And they're telling him where to go. And then the wide receivers and the tight ends would finish off what Josh would say in the huddle. Wow. And then the O-line would handle the protections and make sure that that was all in place. And it didn't matter if they were on the right page. Garrett told me, as long as we were on the wrong page together, that was okay. I mean, I'm telling you, like, I have, there are so many stories like that that are coming out this week that it is just, it, 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 I don't think it has been done like this before. So has it gotten better this week, or to what degree has it gotten better this this week? Yeah, you know, they, they haven't really had a full practice this week. Obviously, they watched the tape on Monday. Tuesday's an off day. Today, they just had a walkthrough. So I saw them out in the practice field. It was just a lot of the quarterbacks working together out there when I was out there. And I talk, was talking to a coach today who told me, like, it will be a lot harder for him this week. If you thought last week was hard, this week could be even harder because they will be throwing more at him. He's going to have to actually know his stuff, and he knows it's his job now. So I think there's a little bit more pressure in that situation, per se. But, I mean, this team has to feel good about where they're at. I think what it was missing last year during all those one-score you know, 11 and 0 one score games was it was a good defense that lifted up the offense. And that's what we have right now is a defense who, no matter what happened in the game last week, they kept the team in it. They were able to shut down the Falcons, which I mean, I'm sure you guys know it's really not super, super hard, but um, definitely <laughs> like, you know, I got to take my shots where I can being a Saints, uh, Saints fan growing up. Um, but yeah, I mean, I mean, it's the defense is playing so well right now, and it really is 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 a huge lift to this offense, who is still obviously have a lot of key pieces out. I mean, Matt, our starting left tackle did not play in this game. Sunday morning, he's a, a late scratch. He's a the, he's considered right now from Pro Football Focus the highest rated offensive lineman in the league. He's out. A guy that comes in, he's a ten year veteran, David Questenberry. You probably have never yeah. heard of him. No, no, for he sure. gets in the game, plays the. Okay, plays in the game the entire game, entire time. Again, no false starts. Perfect offensive performance penalty-wise. He plays the entire game at left tackle he found out Sunday morning. 
That's bizarre. And by I don't the way, know. Fal- Falcons digs are always welcome and encouraged here. So <laughs> fire away whenever you got them. I mean, we can make this a full on just crap on the Falcons. Party. <laughs> no, right? I'm, I'm good with that. But by the way, Tatum, like, I hate the Vikings as well because of the Saints and Vikings postseason, postseason history. So, like, my my Saints fandom generally is also influenced by who I hate based on who beat the Saints for many years throughout the playoffs, which includes the Philadelphia Eagles, the Vikings in 1987, the first time the Saints ever made the playoffs. I mean, I could go down the line. And then recently with, of course, the Minneapolis Miracle and then Kyle Rudolph pushing mm-hmm. off and not getting called for it. I mean, I hate, I hate y'all. I hate y'all very much. So... Um, I'm, That's, I, it's it's I don't totally understandable. I, you know, I mean, look, I lived in Louisiana my whole life. I totally get it. I understand where it comes from. I would say that they feel the same way about the Saints, especially after '09. I think that okay. it didn't matter how many playoff time, how many times they stopped the Saints. I think it was what two times the last three seasons during that final run with Drew Brees. Yep. It didn't matter how many times they were able to beat the Saints. They are. Still salty about 2009 and what happened um, in the championship game there at the Superdome, which I've actually I was actually at that that game. Um, but yeah, they so so the the hatred is mutual, which is why I think it's always fun to get this these two teams together because it's like a I feel like it's a rivalry that not many people outside of these two fan bases know about sure. unless you're like in it. Um, yeah. So if Vikings fans are still salty about it now, then ha. Fine, good, ha, huh? we got that one, the one that mattered the most. Tatum Everett's our guest. LSU <laughs> alum, noted Saints fan behind enemy lines. She works for the Vikings now. She's on Twitter, at Tatum Everett. Y'all give her a follow. Um, speaking of LSU... Oh, come on, Matt. I'm trying to keep my job. You can't say I'm a Saints fan. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, you just said you were at the NFC Championship game in 2009. You lived in Louisiana your whole life, and you grew up a Saints fan. I mean, those are your words. Yes. We can roll back the tape here, Tatum. You know what I mean? But if you need a job, right, I'll get you a job right. with the Saints. No, that's okay. Let's, let's I don't need to go a, progressive here. I've got it. Let's get you a job <laughs> with the Saints, all right? Let's do that. Let's get you out of Minnesota and get you back with the good guys. There you go. Um, <laughs> give us an update on Justin Jefferson. Yeah, I saw JJ last week at the practice facility working with our trainers in the end zone during um, some walkthroughs. He, he's he been such a great teammate during this time, too. I mean, he looks great out there. They have activated him off of um, injured reserve. So he's out at practice, which is awesome. The timeline is still uncertain. He will not be in the game on Sunday. Kevin O'Connell called it a little aggressive to be putting him back out there this week. The Vikings have a week 13 bye, so there's obviously like yeah. two games in between then. So I, I I don't know if he'll be out there in those two games, but I'm sure the quickest he can get out there would be the, the best for us, obviously. It's kind of funny, though, that the Vikings are 4-0 and without JJ after the 1-4 and start. So that that's always going to kind of blow your mind a little bit when you hear that, just thinking that getting your number one player back in there would be so key. Uh, and I do think that that how how the Vikings are doing is going to be a big factor in, in that too because he's going to want to be a part of that and get back into it and knowing that this season means something because it does right now. The Vikings have managed to play their way back into the playoff picture and um, obviously a Destrahan kid, so I always root for him. Um, and, and, he's, and he's been really rooting on everyone. He travels to all the games. He's on the sideline cheering everyone on. I think he's been taking his job as an LSU, ca- uh, LSU captain. <laughs> that was good. Yeah! Uh, as a Vikings captain. <laughs> <laughs> I think he takes his job as a Vikings captain really seriously. Um, first year as the captain, and he really, um, he's been coaching up his guys in the locker room because there have been a lot of names that have either played a huge part in this four game win streak who you may not have heard. They're not really household names because they've had to step up in his absence. I hope all of your bosses are like listening over your shoulder. You just keep making all that. You're just longing to come home, Tatum. We know, we know you're just stuck up there in the frozen, <laughs> the frozen Midwest in Minnesota. Hey, it's, it's only like, it's only like 50 degrees this week. It's Wait, not too shabby. 50 or 40 degrees. You said 50 or 15. 50. 50. Yeah, we, we had snow, but then the heat came back, okay. melted the snow, and now we're good. So I, I got two more things. One, what's the general vibe considering, like, I mean, the injuries, man. First Jefferson, then Cousins goes down. Yeah. You got to feel like, well, there went the season, but yeah. here the Vikings are at five and four and maybe a little bit of renewed confidence after last week. So give me a vibe check. Yeah. God, I... 
honestly, I don't get, I don't know how they do it. I really don't. They manage to lose these key pieces. After JJ goes out, he was, you know, 15 targets a game. Like, how do you replace that? It's, it's literally, it's, it's the lifesaver for Kirk in drives. He's the reason that we had so many one score victories last year. And to have that happen was a huge blow. And then I, I can't describe enough the fact the locker room after the Packers win. So it's a huge deal for Vikings to go into Lambeau field and handle Packers, handle the Packers. They're not just beating them. They beat them handily, but they lose their quarterback in the process. And that locker room was probably the most miserable looking locker room I've seen, even Mm. after some of our losses, which is, is crazy to say, because you could just feel how deflated this team was when Kirk went out. He's one of the most durable quarterbacks in the league and for him to not be there is a huge deal as he was playing some of his best football of his career. Kevin O'Connell is a big culture guy. I know people say that a lot, but I feel like they, they walk the talk here and they're constantly talking about your response. How do you respond to this adversary? How do you go and move past this? It's something that the players talk about consistently and constantly. And I think that just really has kind of become second nature for a lot of these guys. So Kirk goes down, they get Jaron Hall ready. They make the trade for Josh Dobbs. He goes in the game. You didn't have your starting left tackle. Then your running back two gets an Achilles injury. Then your wide receiver two has a concussion in the game and he's out. It was just blow after blow. And somehow someone always seems to step up. The vibes here is that this team still has a ton of belief. And I don't, I don't know if they'll ever not believe unless, I mean, they start off 0-3 one and four, and now they're still in the playoff picture. I don't know how they do it, but um, it, it's something that I have to definitely attribute to the coaching staff and these players. All right, last thing for you, Tatum. Uh, what's, give me a key for Sunday. What's the key matchup that we're going to keep an eye on Sunday against the Saints? I really think it's going to be the Saints uh, up front against Jaron Hall. Oh, Jaron Hall. Whoo, Josh yeah. Dobbs. So many quarterback there names to remember for me. It's just been kind of like right. a, it's been a shuffle. It's been a bit of a carousel. Um, I, I think it's going to be Dobbs and the ability, like, I, I think it'll be very interesting because for the saints, they don't really know what they'll do with Dobbs yet because they don't really have tape on him from what the Vikings plan on doing with him. So I think that's going to be really, really key. I think if the saints are able to force turnovers, that will really give them the advantage. This team seems, you know, they, they seem to have fixed their turnover problem for the most part, but, um, I, you know, it's it's going to be a crazy crowd. It's going to be very loud and obnoxious. And I do think that being in the favor of the Vikings in that sense gives them a bit of a home field advantage. But uh, yeah, for me, it's going to be, it all lays on the shoulders of Josh Dobbs because I have a lot of faith in this defense to be able to get the job done. They're flying around. They're having fun. They really love playing in Brian Flores' system. So my biggest question mark is Joshua Dobbs, the new starting quarterback for the Minnesota Vikings. Tatum Everett on Twitter at Tatum Everett, a Louisiana native, LSU alum, a noted Saints and LSU homer, just miserably stuck working for the Minnesota Vikings right now, but good enough to spend some time. Yeah, clearly us. hating my life, right? <laughs> <laughs> Tatum, we appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thanks, Matt. See ya. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact. And be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.